proud company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry, presents the Cavalcade of America. Tonight's star, Loretta Young. Tonight's story, The Port of Missing Men. the Maritime Commission named a liberty ship in honor of a woman named Janet Lord Roper. But unless you're of the sea, the chances are you've never heard of her. What did she do? Who was she? Well, it all started a long time ago. The place, Calcutta. The year... 1885. All right, come on, snap it up. Let's go. Line up on deck here. Higgins. Yes. Landowski. Yes. Mills. Mills, Robert A. He ain't aboard, sir. Jump ship? I seen him in the alley by that waterfront clip joint last night. Two natives was working him over. Last I seen, they was dragging him off somewhere. All right, here's tough luck. Sutton, go to the shipping office. Get a replacement right away. We're shoving off by noon. Next port, Boston. Uh, excuse me. Are you the first mate of this ship? Hey, what are you doing hanging around here? The Boston docks ain't no place for a girl like you. Well, I- I'm looking for Bobby Mills. He's a neighbor of mine, and his mother's worried to death. Mills? Yes. Oh, yeah, we left him in Calcutta. You left him? Look, honey, uh, what's your name? Janet Lord. Look, Miss Lord, when it's time to shove off, we shove off. But maybe something happened. Maybe he was killed. Maybe. And if he wasn't, how can he get back to Boston? That's his problem. Don't you care? Look, sister, I got my own problems. Where have you been? Mom, I stopped in to see Mrs. Mills. Oh, did she hear from Bobby yet? His ship came in, but Bobby wasn't on it. Oh, what happened? I don't know, Mama. Well, we can't get any information. As far as they're concerned, he's just a name on a list. He, he could have deserted ship or fallen over the side or died. Mama, nobody cares. Well, darling, we mustn't let ourselves get too upset. Mama! Well, I mean, it isn't as though he were your sweetheart or a member of the family. Well, he's a member of somebody's family. And you should see Mrs. Mills. Oh, she doesn't know what to do, even. Oh, you're right, darling. I I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. We never heard from Bobby Mills. He was swallowed by the earth, indifferent. Just another able-bodied seaman, easily replaced. But I was young then, and only the young seemed to care. I lived near the docks in Boston, and I used to walk along the waterfront, watching the tall ships in the harbor and wondering about the men who went to sea. I would pass the cafes and saloons and watch the sailors desperately trying to forget their loneliness. And then, down at the end of the pier, I'd stop a while and listen to the scene that came from the Seaman's Friend Society. I'd watch the men through the open window. And I'd wonder what thoughts went through their minds. Now there's some coffee and donuts in the main lounge. God bless you all. Uh, excuse me, sir. Oh, oh, you startled me. I, I didn't see you come in. Well, I was standing outside the window. I hope you don't mind. 
I finally got up the courage to see what it looks like inside. No, not at all. I, um, I saw that sign on the bulletin board, uh, the one that calls for volunteers. Oh? Well, I volunteer. Well, aren't you a little young for welfare work? Well, you look very old yourself. Well, uh, usually we get women much older. Well, there's nothing on the sign that says you have to be a certain age. No, no, I admit that. Then you'll let me? Well, it isn't up to me, but I don't think they'd... Uh... Well, you see, uh, you're... Well, you're a very pretty girl, and some of these men haven't seen a woman for months. Well, in that case, I think they deserve to see a pretty one. Yeah? All right, I'll take you to see the director, if you like. Oh, thank you. You know, I, I was watching these men. They all look so lonely and, and bored. It seems to me the only reason they're here is because they have nothing else to do. Yes, you're absolutely right. That's one of our biggest problems here. Oh? Huh? The men either don't come to services at all, or when they do, it's, it's well, just to kill time. I, I, I can't seem to get their interest. Well, could I try to help? Well, frankly, I don't think you could handle them. They're, they're a tough lot. Why, well, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You sound just like everybody else, always looking at the sailors as some sort of dangerous delinquent. Well, I happen to think differently. Why, well, any man who wants to spend his life on the sea has to have a, well, a lot of the little boy in him. And a lot of poetry in his bones, too. Take any man who's ever stood alone on the deck of a ship and seen a spot where the ocean meets the sky. Each of these men, I'm sure, has wondered about God. How old did you say you are? Well, I'm old enough to know a sailor's a human being just like anybody else. Uh, did you tell me your name? No, I didn't. Well, uh, mine's Ed Roper. Oh, uh, Janet Lord. Lord? Yes. Well, no wonder. <laughs> You're coming up for coffee? Oh, yes, I'll be up. It sure was a wonderful class today. Oh, thank you. Is uh, that Bible stuff for real? Of course. Yeah, but that part where you oh, said... Janet. Yes? Oh, hiya, Mr. Roper. Hello, Lando. Hey, uh, how was class today? Great. Only she'll never tell us how it turns out till next week. Ah, <laughs> oh, come on, Miss Lord. I'm shipping out tomorrow. How does the story come out? Uh -uh. If he wants to know, let him read it for himself. Well, how about it? If I give you the Bible... Will you read it? Oh, I can't never get past the begots and the begats. Oh. <laughs> All right. I'll try. But see you later. Uh, I'll try. Yeah, it looks like another packed house today. Uh-huh. Standing room only. Well, now, you don't have to rub it in. <laughs> if I had long blonde hair like you have and a pretty little smile, I bet I could attract a crowd, too. Oh, it's all great. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I deserve it, but not every Sunday for a whole year. A year? Mm hmm has it been a year? Fourteen months, three weeks. <laughs> that was a rhetorical question. Uh, I didn't know you were keeping score. Didn't you? Well, maybe a little. Uh, let's go out and sit in our... Uh, sit on the pier. Did, did you start to say our place? I wish I could say that without feeling like a schoolboy. It, it does seem like our place, though. Yes. Remember the first time we sat out there? After my first class, oh, I was scared to death. <laughs> you didn't act it. Yeah, but you knew it. Mm -hmm. I knew it. And, Ed, I feel so good about working, I mean. Uh, about doing something and feeling useful. And that's all? I ain't about you. Let's go out, Janet. I, I can talk to you so much better out there. Oh, yes, Ed. Let's go. <laughs> Listen, 
to those tugs out there. Ed Roper, you're not going to change the subject again. Oh, but Janet, it's ridiculous. I know. That's what my mother said. Well, you'll never have a real home. No roots. I know. And and probably no money. I know. Well, it's impossible. Look, will you ask me or not? Well, Janet, you know I want to, but I... Well, I can't. All right. Then I'll ask you. Ed Roper. I'm a silly little girl who happens to want more out of life than a well-stocked pantry. I don't believe a woman's place is under glass. I want you, Ed. And you want me. Now, come on. Stop being so noble. But, Janet... We're not going to have time to be martyrs. We've got a whole life ahead of us. And it's exciting. Isn't it, Ed? Kind of like the sailors. We're starting out on a trip. A long and wonderful voyage together. Together, Ed. Together. Oh, my darling. But there'll be a lot of rough weather ahead, Janet. I know. God help us. Oh, God will. He helps all sorts of people. You can count on that. You can? Oh, sure. That's God's profession. Hmm. take much to set up a canteen. Yeah. All you need are four walls and coffee pots and a man like Ed. We moved along the eastern coast, and when the center of shipping moved west, we moved along with it to Portland, Oregon. Just Ed and I and the coffee pot. This is Seaman's canteen. I'm looking for Mother Roper. Mother? Mother Roper. You know where she is? Well, I'm Mrs. Roper. Well, he told me to ask for Mother Roper. They said she'd stake me to a meal in the bunk for the night. Oh, sure. Sit down. You Mother Roper? Young woman like you? Mother? Well, it's a new one on me. <laughs> Must be getting old, hmm? Well, look, I'm, uh, I'm hungry, so let's get it over with. Uh, what uh, prayers and stuff do I have to say? Prayers? You know, that church stuff. Let's do it now and we get it over with. You don't have to say anything. Yeah, I know. I've been in these places before. In order to get a lousy cup of coffee, you've got to get yourself saved or something. You're pretty tough, aren't you? I've been around. What's your name? Ben. Why? Look, Ben. We might as well get this settled right now. In the first place, you're not so tough. And even if you were, I'm not impressed. You can act as tough as you like or on shipboard or in these skid row dives. But as long as you're in here, relax. You don't scare anybody. Clear? Now, wait a minute. I ain't that broke. I got to take that kind of stuff from you or from nobody. You don't have to take anything if you don't want to, but neither do I. You can stay here just as long as you want. You're as welcome as anybody. No angles, no obligations. God doesn't have to bribe you with a meal. If he's going to bribe you, he'll use bigger bait. So just keep quiet, and I'll see what kind of chow I can round up. Huh? Now, look, I, I come in here... You keep talking, and I'm liable to be forced to bang you on the head with this coffee pot. Then it'll be too late to pray. <laughs> oh. Hey, you know, you, uh, you don't talk like no woman i ever seen. Especially no church woman. <laughs> if you mean that for a compliment, you're sure going all the way around by China to give it to me. Uh, it's just my way of talking. Yeah. I, uh, I, I'm sure glad to meet you, ma'am. Well, I'm glad to meet you, Ben. You know, the truth is, I, uh... I knock off a prayer or two myself when, uh, When nobody's looking, you huh? Oh. You know something, Ben? So do I. play starring Loretta Young as Janet Lord Roper. Janet Lord Roper was a girl, and then she was a woman. She had three children and a husband and a world full of friends. Because no one seemed to care about the men who went to sea, she set up a canteen in Portland, Oregon in the early part of this century. Here, she not only gave food and comfort to the sailing men, but kept in contact with them throughout the world. Ed, hmm? you see this? What? This card from Ben. Who? 
Oh, you remember one of the sailors who came in the canteen last year? That big fella, you know. Oh, oh yes. Oh, well, what's he say? Oh, just hello. I... He had... Ed, what's the matter? Uh, nothing. Nothing, dear. Ed. Ed, you've been feeling terrible for months now. Will you go to a doctor or do I have to drag you? Oh, that feels great. Now, please, stop making a noise like a woman. Ed, do me a favor. Uh, go to bed early tonight. I'll lock you. Mm -mm. huh? Got too much to do. Look, you won't be able to do anything if you don't start taking care of yourself. Now, just because all these sailors call you mother is no reason to start mothering me. I feel all right. Now, don't talk me into being sick. Oh, I wouldn't say for sure, but I think you're the most impossible man I've ever seen. You like impossible men? Well, this one I do. <laughs> see, so what's the argument? Oh, please, darling, go see a doctor just to shut me up, will you? When I'm sick, I'll see a doctor. Right now, I'm fine. Now, if you can spare a kiss for your very healthy husband, <laughs> I... Yeah. It never fails. The minute I get you alone... Come in. Excuse me, I'm looking for Mother Roper. You might as well face it, honey. That looks like your name for life. <laughs> Sir? Oh, uh, pardon me. I was talking to my wife, uh, Mother Roper. It's just a local joke. I'm Mrs. Roper. Could I help you? Uh, would you two excuse me? Yes, of course, sir. Uh, I hate to bother your name, but... Well... <clears throat> oh, come here. <laughs> Sit down. There. <laughs> I was trying so hard not to cry. Well, you go right ahead and cry. <laughs> go on, get it out of your system. It, it's my son, Tommy. Yeah. We ain't heard from him in over a year. He used to write me. He's seen you, Miss Roper, and you was good to him. And, well, I'm worried to death. How can I find him? Maybe something happened. I can't find out nothing. Now, what's his name? Tommy Johnson. Uh -huh. He's a little fella. Oh, I know you'd remember him if you'd seen him. He's got one of them freckled grins, you know. He's got red hair and... Tommy Johnson. I guess maybe you meet so many fellas. Texas. Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. You're from Texas. Now, if you just told me that, I'd have remembered right away. Tommy Tex, that's what the fellas call him, huh? Uh, he was always getting joked about that. Oh. Miss Roper, you know where he is? I'm worried to death. Can you help me find him? I'll start asking around, Mrs. Johnson. You know, when I get all my boys out looking for someone, we could find the devil himself. Clear the text. I'm a hungry sailor and I'm coming well, aboard. Sam. Mother Rupert, the love of my life. Sam, <laughs> after all these months. My goodness, it's good to see you. Oh, and I never mind the flattery. Just, just close your eyes huh? and open your hands. Huh? What is it? Never mind. It's just a little something I uh, I happen to pick up in Algiers. Ben, a necklace. Uh, now, look here. How many times do I have to tell you not to bring me anything? What could I do? This Algiers fella comes up to me and he says, Here, give this to Mother uh -huh. Roper. Now, could I refuse? Oh, you're all You know that? <laughs> sure. And, oh, and by the way, do you remember that kid you was looking for, that uh, tiny tech? Yes. Well, I seen a guy in Shanghai used to sail with him. Oh, since the last time you heard of him, he was aboard the freighter Monotop. Monotop? Mm hmm. Monotop. Now, who do I know aboard that? Ah, Slim Patterson. That's who, all right. Slim Patterson, you know, he's a Wait, wait, wait. wait. Now, look, are we, we going to stand here all day talking about another man, or do I get me a cup of coffee? <laughs> sure, right? Ben. Sit down, I'll get it for you. Uh, how's them three little girls of yours? I bet they grow to foot since I last seen them. Oh, they're huh? just fine. And Mr. Roper, how's he feeling? He, uh, he's fine. You're just fine, Ben. Mrs. Roper. How is he, Doctor? You've got to keep him quiet. Yes, all right. Very quiet. Doctor. Is it serious? get through the night. Oh. Mrs. Roper, I'm sorry. Mother Roper, I'm sorry. I just, I just found out. I uh, hope you don't mind my coming to your house. It's all right, Ben. You know, when they told me at the canteen about Mr. Roper... 
Well, ain't, ain't there something I can do? The fellas want, want me to ask you if there was anything at all that we could... No. No, thanks. Oh, let it out. You're all the time listening to our troubles. Come on, get it off your chest. Oh, Ben. Ben, it won't be the same without Ed. Ben, how could God do this? There was a man who spent his whole life working for him. He killed himself with work. How could God take him away? Oh, Ben, why? Why did God do it? I, I guess you, you know God better than me, but if, he, if he'd done it, he must have had his reason. I don't know, Ben. I don't know what those reasons could be. I, I've spent my whole life loving and working for him, and now I... Oh, Ben, I'm not sure of anything anymore. I know. Oh, do you feel that? Yes. Oh, Miss Roper, you remember me. Uh, Mrs. Johnson. Uh, no, I was just wondering if you heard anything about my son. No, no, I haven't. It's been near eight months since I first asked you about him. Mrs. Johnson, what do you expect? Miracles? Do you expect me to snap my fingers and make him appear? I don't know where your son is, and what's more, I don't care. I have troubles of my own. I'm sorry I troubled you, Miss Roper. Ben. What? What did I see? Did that come out of me? You, you just said you was a human being, that's all. Like all the rest of us. Oh, Ben... Then go after her. Get Mrs. Johnson. Bring her back yes, here. Yes, oh, God, forgive me. I'm sorry. I didn't know. I can't apologize enough, Mrs. Johnson, or or thank you enough. Thank me? Yes, I I had to go through it, I guess. We all have to taste a certain amount of humility. Well, what I mean is, God used you as an instrument to show me that I'm a human being like everybody else. Just as many faults and as many good points and no more. And, and I want to thank you for making me realize it. Well, I, I don't understand. Well, I was mixed up, and I was hurt, and I, I didn't know where to turn. And, and when I questioned God, he sent me an answer. That's you, Mrs. Johnson. Me, mm, Miss Roper? Yes. Yes, you. And we're going to find your son, and lots of sons before I'm through. Oh, I've got to work twice as hard now. Because now, I've got to work for Ed. For Ed, too. And she did. That was Janet Lord Roper's life. Ask anyone down at 25 South Street in New York City where the Siemens Church Institute is. Ask any seaman in the union halls, in the boarding houses, in the ports of the world, where ever sailors get together. They'll tell you about Mother Roper and how her life's work reunited over 10,000 sailor men with their families. But if you ask them when Mother Roper died, they'll tell you that although it has been officially noted that she left us during the last war at the age of 74, she hasn't really passed on at all. No, like all good sailors, she had dropped her anchor in Snug Harbor. And even today, her anchor lights are so bright they can still be seen by sailors who know how to look for them. They shine from her port of missing men. Our thanks to Loretta Young and the Cavalcade Players for tonight's story, The Port of Missing Men. Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade, The Port of Missing Men, was written by Arnold Schumann and adapted from an article, Mother of Missing Men, by the late Frank Laskier, published in Lookout Magazine. 
Original music was composed by Arden Cornwell, conducted by Donald Voorhees. The program was directed by John Zoller. With Loretta Young as our star, you heard Vinton Hayworth as Ed Roper, Bill Zuckert as Ben, Harold Huber as first mate, Danny Ocko as Landowski, Ida Heineman as Mrs. Lord, and Ruth York as Mrs. Johnson. This is Cy Harris speaking. The DuPont Cavalcade of America comes to you from the Velasco Theater in New York and is sponsored by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living. Through chemistry. Next, Hollywood theater stars William Holden on NBC.